You know, after a weekend of eating, wine, dining, treats, you say to yourself, I'm going to get started on Monday. Then Monday comes and someone showed up you had a glass of wine with. Tuesday comes, your kids have cookies out because they just baked. Uh, Wednesday comes and you're like, screw it, I'm going to start on the weekend, right? And then the weekend comes and it becomes this cycle over and over Today on the podcast, we're going to talk about nutrition and how you can reset the way that you've been fueling your body. Welcome to the Body Project Podcast. I'm your host, Katherine Tanaka, fitness, nutrition, and accountability coach, and the host and producer of this podcast. Typically, I interview the best fitness and movement professionals in the industry on their origin stories and how they use fitness and movement as the access point to transform their clients' entire lives. I believe that fundamentally movement is this beautiful way that we can get connected to our mind and our body and start using the disciplines and the focus that we learn through fitness and we can infiltrate that in our mindset, in the way you nourish our bodies and literally it will change and transform how you show up in your life and how everything else mirrors back to you. Today on the Reset Series, a four-part Reset Series, we are going to speak about nutrition and how you can reset after the summer, how you can reset after the weekend, and how you can reset if you have been on this perhaps not so good trajectory of fueling your body. And I don't want to make it a complicated podcast today, but I wanted to bring up three things that I want you to look at. You know, and this isn't just a COVID conversation, even though this initially is airing during the global pandemic as we were trying to move through it, I think resetting your nutrition is really an everyday conversation because if it isn't a pandemic that has kind of thrown off your nutrition, it is the weekend, it is the gala, it is the wedding, it is the weekend away at a cottage on a vacation. It is so many things that show up in our lives. And even though I am a huge proponent of finding things that are consistent and sustainable, life happens and often we get derailed. And the reason why I wanted to talk about this in our reset series is because in the midst of this pandemic of COVID, people have been feeling overwhelmed. People have completely derailed the way that they've been nourishing their bodies and A lot of my clients right now are having a hard time getting back on track. And so today's conversation is going to be kind of three parts. One, talking about how you've been maybe self-sabotaging during this time. And it does align with not just COVID, but how sometimes life shows up, right? And we're going to be speaking about mindfulness, how we can bring in this practice that we've been speaking a lot of through covid but also how mindfulness can be used when we are often derailed in our nutrition. And then finally, we're going to speak about how we can start nourishing our bodies. What are the three things you can start doing today that are real tangible steps that are not these big undertakings that you can find that will make a difference for you starting now. So let's get right into it. So, This has been a really interesting time. I know for me, when the pandemic hit, I was doing really great right in the beginning of it. I was sustaining some of the deep practices that I have in terms of nourishing my body well, in terms of being mindful with my hydration, in terms of just being really regimented. But as we moved into week one, week two, week three in this global pandemic and realizing for me that we are in this longer than I thought we would be, that some habits that I didn't really want showing up kind of creeped in. Some things like, you know, I'm the type of person that I would drink one, maybe two glasses of wine once a month. Like literally, it was a very seldom occurrence that I would be drinking wine or having a a, alcoholic beverage. That became to having wine every single night. Out of being at home, it felt like vacation, right? Out of maybe a coping strategy of trying to mitigate kind of the stress of we are in this global pandemic for longer than a week. Uh, And it just became a habit really quickly. Layered on top of 
when you're home a lot and my kids were home and trying to homeschool them, I was baking and cooking more than ever. And these bake-offs would turn into a lot of baked goods. And one of my things is sweets. I have a very massive sweet tooth and I would love having baked goods around. So alcohol later on top of uh, baked goods, on top of coffee. I don't know about you guys, but I love my coffee. And my one to two a day coffee consumption started becoming this like three to four. And especially in March in Toronto where I am, it was still quite cold. And so having a warm cup of coffee to kind of soothe myself, my nerves to go with that cookie mid-afternoon as well as before dinner, as well as after breakfast <laughs> became this ritual, right? And my nutrition kind of derailed let's say completely derailed, right? And I know that many can relate to this. And if it wasn't that, it might have been something else in your nutrition that you weren't as regimented. So you were maybe eating all over the place, that your routine was all over the place, that you were Netflixing and binging late at night when typically you'd go to bed earlier because you had to get up for work. And a lot of people were working from home. A lot of people were on a bit of a hiatus from work because a lot of businesses paused. Some of you perhaps lost your job. So for many of us, our nutrition became a free-for-all. Things were all over the place. And many of us, many of my clients, have shared with me that they kind of threw their nutrition and taking care of themselves through nourishing their bodies well through the wayside, right? Kids being at home, losing jobs, stress, Stress allowed us to kind of self-sabotage in a way that hasn't been on our radars ever before, right? And this may is very true for COVID, but this may be true to just life circumstances. If you lose a job, lose a loved one, um, maybe have a breakup in a relationship that you're in, there are so many different factors that show up in life in everyday situations. And one of the things that I always speak to my clients about inside our online studio or inside my transformation program is that self-sabotage is often this prominent conversation that can pop up, meaning that you will sometimes throw yourself under the bus, give yourself these really good excuses of why and how and allowing yourself to do things that don't honor your nutrition, that don't honor yourself, that don't honor the sacred space of your body, don't honor your goals because you give yourself excuses. Like in a global pandemic, you know, no one is going to see me. So who cares about how I eat? In a global pandemic, I am feeling overwhelmed by stress. And therefore, who cares about how I fuel my body? I think we can often look at self-sabotage and the way that we speak to ourselves and the way that we allow excuses to get into the way of what our goals are. For example, self-sabotage can show up like this. And I mentioned it at the start of the podcast that you are planning Monday is coming. You know, you had a great weekend with friends, celebrating life, whatever it is, with wine and cheese and treats and sweets and you maybe overindulged a bit, which is fine. But then you allow, and so you say, Monday I'm going to start again, right? And then Monday rolls around and you had a really great breakfast, great lunch, but then a friend showed up because everyone's working from home and is like, oh, I brought this nice bottle of rosé, it's still warm out, let's have a glass of wine. You have a glass of wine. She brought this like leftover cake from her weekend. You guys shared a piece of cake. And then you said, oh, I screwed up. I screwed up, I had a glass of wine, and I ate a piece of cake, screw it. So now you say screw it to try to get back on track on Monday, and then you keep derailing on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, well now it's weekend, right? And you keep going into that cycle. And inevitably, having that mindset, that all or nothing mindset, and kind of throwing in the towel if things don't go exactly as you imagined, that you just self-sabotaged the entire potential of you making progress in that week, right? Or it shows up like this, that you think that, okay, I have a plan, I'm going out with 
for dinner with friends, and I'm going to be mindful of portion controlling. I'm going to have a really great meal, the fish with sweet potatoes and veggies, and you're going to have you know, a small portion of dessert you'll share with a girlfriend or a boyfriend or whoever. The week that, that comes and they're out of the fish that you love. And there's bread on the table and you're starving and you feel discombobulated because things are not as planned. And so you end up having a piece of bread, a second, a third, a fourth piece. You have two extra glasses of wine and you feel like, oh my God, I screwed up. So screw it. What's the point? I can't do this anyway right? So self-sabotage often shows up of these excuses that we put in place, forgetting that one occurrence doesn't need to derail your entire progress. One occurrence doesn't mean, to, doesn't mean that every single day thereafter has to be this derailment of your progress, right? And it also doesn't mean that you can't enjoy life, right? Because part of you honoring your body, fueling your body, and getting to the results is consistency, but also baby steps. Let's talk about limiting beliefs for one quick sec. So limiting beliefs are beliefs that, and constructs that you kind of have in place that you've always kind of believed. But when it comes to nutrition and fitness and your body project goals, and we're going to speak a little bit more about mindset next week, but I want you to look at the things that you've held in place that maybe might not be true. Kind of like I was just saying about those self, the self-sabotaging thoughts. Do you think it is possible that it might not be true that if you, you know, have an indulgent weekend, it doesn't mean you can't get back on track? Or if you do get back on track on Monday, if a friend comes by on in the afternoon to have a glass of wine, that that might, doesn't mean that you're completely derailed and that you can't get back on track right? So next week we're going to speak a little bit more about limiting beliefs and those constructs and how you can reset if you're wanting to get on back on track with your nutrition, your fitness, and feeling good as we move through COVID and feeling good coming out of COVID, right? But just ask yourself, right? Where are you potentially self-sabotaging your progress, your nutrition? Where do maybe you have some beliefs that need to be challenged, right? That maybe you actually are the type of person that is able to stick with consistent nourishing your body. Maybe you are the type of person that doesn't need to derail every single weekend. Maybe you're the type of person that can indulge on the weekend and it doesn't mean that you need to eat the whole pizza and the whole cake by yourself. Maybe you are the type of person that can have a couple pieces of, of pizza and have a piece of cake, right? Oftentimes, nutrition and eating foods that are outside the realm of goal supporting is being able to have something in moderation as a treat that doesn't need to derail you, right? So there's a consideration for you. Now let's talk about mindfulness for a second. I've spoken about mindfulness and mindset throughout this podcast over the last two years. And we spoke a lot about this with Samara Zelenicker when we spoke about mindfulness matters and how we can use mindfulness to move through stress and emotion. But let's talk about it in context of how can you reset your nutrition? There is an awareness that we need to bring to the way that we move our bodies, to the way that we feel, to the way that we want to feel in our clothes, the way that we want to feel in our bodies, and the way that we want to move through this time, and really any time in our lives, right? And so I want you to think of mindfulness as awareness, becoming aware of how you're feeling, becoming aware of some of the triggers that make us maybe emotionally eat, some of the triggers or the awareness around our self-sabotaging thoughts that lead to the behaviors, maybe some of those limiting beliefs that also lead to the behaviors of self-sabotage, right? And once you bring some awareness to, huh, this is a pattern I have, then you can maybe move through that differently than before. Right? When I spoke with Tamara Zelnicker, who is the founder of Mindfulness Matters, we spoke about some of these practices that you can put in place. Sim something simple as 10 seconds of breath work before eating, for example. 10 seconds of breath work before reacting. And when you can find that gap between 
what your usual trigger is and the response, you can then choose again. I spoke about this, I'm not sure which episode, but about how you have the ability to choose again. And this is one of the actual really powerful things in the mindset work we do inside my transformation program is that we use that gap of mindfulness and the act of choosing again as a powerful tool to say, usually I do this but I can choose again and do something different that leads to a new practice, a new thought, a new behavior that leads to a mini success. And when you start layering those practices often enough, it becomes consistent enough to become a habit. And those habit forms, those successes that lead to distinct, sustainable, consistent transformations that show up in your body, that show up in your mindset, that show up in the way that you feel feel that show up emotionally of your you know happiness center that happiness quotient of how content you feel and that especially in times of global pandemics or in high stress circumstances that life will throw after at us hereafter is looking at how can we bring that mindset in that practice of mindfulness that practice of how fit is your mindset right So I invite you to start becoming aware, right? And there are different ways to do this, whether it's through breath, whether it's through journaling and reflecting, or whether it's through mindfulness meditation, sitting down at the end of the day and taking almost a tally of how did the day go? And even layering on a morning meditation of setting a clear intention for yourself for the day of how do I want to move through today? right? Kind of like the plan. If you've listened to any of my uh, meal plan, fitness plans, anything that we've spoken about on the podcast specific to how you can get the results that you want, one of them is looking at how do you plan? I believe if you fail to plan, you plan to fail, right? That you are setting yourself up for what you plan for. And if you do not take into consideration what you want in the trajectory of your day in the future, that when it becomes a bit of a free-for-all, then you lose control, attention, intention moving forward, right? And bringing us to our final point of our short podcast today, looking at how do you nourish your body? One of the things with our reset series is that we have been doing a seven day reset green shake challenge. I've done this before and I'm doing it again. This is a way that you can reset the way that you feel your body, right? I really do believe that the mindfulness is a big piece of it. But if I can give you a simple template for you to follow, one green shake a day of how you can fuel your body to make you feel great, it's an easy step by step way and a simple thing to adhere to of how you can shift the way your body feels. So if you want to try that out, join us at www.katherinesnacka.com slash green shake challenge, right? So that is a seven day format of emails, amazing recipes for you to follow day after day to get you on track, to get you resetting your nutrition, and also to get you inside our Facebook group where in a couple weeks we're going to do five-day reset challenges looking at nutrition, fitness, and mindset to get you on track, to get some momentum building so you can feel good going into September to transform the way you look, feel, live, and do. So let's look at nourishing for a second. So on top of the Green Shake Challenge, that's a really great way to nourish your body with great nutrient density all in one Greek shake, let me offer these four things about nourishing your body. I'm a really big proponent of becoming really intuitive with the way you fuel your body. Yes, we can portion control. Yes, I can give you meal plans. And inside my transformation program, this is part of it, uh, that I give you an easy to follow, a no think system of how you can feel your body, what that looks like exactly to get you the results. But part of that practice is also becoming connected to the mindfulness piece of how can you mindfully fuel your body? How can you eat slowly? Because I know oftentimes for me, when I am in this stressful place, 
like COVID, like life, like work, like kids going back to school, we almost become in this fight or flight response that eating becomes, yes, a pleasurable experience, but sometimes I have to do. And when we rush through these things, especially when it's supposed to come from a place of receiving nourishment in your body, it kind of throws off energetically the way your body feels, right? And so if you can introduce this mindfulness, this awareness to the way you feel your body by slowly and mindfully eating your meals, you will find that that awareness will make you be very present to, oh, usually I can eat this much to feel full, but now when you slow it down, when you are present to every single bite, every single chew, you can intuitively be like, intuitively be aware of, oh, I actually feel completely satisfied and satiated, that I don't need to eat the rest of this. And so oftentimes my clients find that they're able to move through, have something, feel, com feel completely satiated, and then walk away from portions that they would have consumed in the past. And when you now start having this practice of awareness when nourishing your body, being present to what you're putting in, you've now feel, felt, fueled your body in a way that you feel completely satiated without having to consume a certain amount. And your body starts releasing on to held weight. Your body, your body starts feeling lighter and more nourished, right? So that's your step one. Can you bring awareness to nourishing your body? Step two, this, my philosophy around nourishing your body is about how can we still keep in those things that we love, like wine, like sweet treats, like burgers, like things that you may think that are only indulgent food, but how can we allow these treats in moderation? I believe moderation is the key. When you go into the severe deprivation space and you don't allow for these flexibilities of flexible nutrition, I believe that it can perpetuate derailing more often. It can reduce the rate of consistency and sustainability. I'm really a huge proponent of finding ways to find sustainable living, sustainable fitness, sustainable Health, right and part of getting a lifestyle change is finding ways we can sustainably add in good nutrition right and part of that is adding in treats or things that feel like treats that could nourish your body too right because I have this delicious protein ball recipe that feels like a dessert I have this delicious this delicious cake chocolate cake recipe that feels like super indulgent, but actually is good for you, right? So there are different ways that you can reframe the way you think, that you can look at your mindset around or your beliefs around how treat food can look and feel like, and actually learn that good food can be just good food that can taste delicious and nourish your body. So that's the second thing. The third thing, is check in, right? I know that sometimes it's so much easier to go to comfort foods, to go to sweet treats, to go to that glass of wine. But if you go beyond what you already do with fruits and veggies and just being mindful and bringing that awareness of how can I choose a wide variety of options to try? veggies and fruits, which di with different ways of preparing it, especially at this time of year with before, you know, harvest season, there's some really great fruits and veggies out there. Looking at what is local, organic, some really good stuff for you to eat also allows for your body to increase absorption, to increase variety, and that diversity in your system, in your microbiome, in your gut, gut health, really boosts how you feel and how your body metabolizes and therefore oftentimes allows you to just release some unwanted weight. And with that comes that boost of antioxidants, phyto anti antioxidants, phytonutrients, fiber in your system that allows you to feel your best emotionally, physically, nourishment wise cellularly in your system so that's the third thing the fourth thing 
is, you know, with it being summer, with it being COVID, we are, I know I am, trying to find easier ways of making food, which sometimes for my kids turns into hamburgers, hot dogs, processed stuff, or stuff that's already pre-made, pre-created, that maybe we can just get back to the things that matter. Looking at good quality lean meats or good quality produce, good quality vegan proteins that we can add in that are still simple and quick and easy, but still nourish our bodies, right? And when you start nourishing your body from this place of number one, like we said, being aware and eating slowly that you can get feel satiated, then your body wins. The second piece, looking at how can you still include those treat foods without derailing. You can have a glass of wine. Maybe you don't want to have three every night, right? But can you take that into consideration with all the other things in your day, right? Because if you are eating your full-blown meals and having dessert and three glasses of wine every day, yes, by default, that's going to boost your insulin response, that's going to boost your caloric intake, that's going to boost all those things that have become that snowball effect, right? So two, can you still add in those foods that are treat foods and maybe rejig the recipe so that it can still fuel your body well but feel indulgent, right? The third, how can we add in a diversity, a variety of fruits and veggies that feel good? And fourth, how can we look at our protein sources, how we get those amino acids in our bodies to help support our metabolic health in a way that is sustainable, that is optimal in our bodies? So I just wanted to touch on those things as ways to look at how can you reset right now in your nutrition as we move through COVID and looking at the question, how do I want to feel coming out of this time? Because I know for me, for one, with my clients and how I have been operating over the last five to six months, I want to feel great in my body. And part of that is looking at how can I reset with these simple things? that can move the needle forward. So I hope that was insightful. If you do have any questions, I would love to hear from you. But if you wanna join our Green Shake Challenge, make sure, make sure you register for that. It is seven days of a free challenge of amazing shake recipes. And if you can, join us inside the Body Project. No, inside the Body Project Insiders. It is a Facebook private community where we can share these shakes and these recipes together and how we are doing from a place of accountability. So make sure you join us, www.katherinetanaka.com slash green shake challenge. As always, I appreciate you joining us week after week on the podcast. Make sure you join us next week as we finish up this series looking at mindset, how we can wrap up mindset into the fitness, into the nutrition, and into how you can move yourself through this time trying to thrive, not just survive. As always, thank you, thank you. Please rate and review, subscribe, wherever you are listening or watching this. Ideally, leaving a review on iTunes as it does help me reach more people. Because if this lands with you of how you want to reset or answering the question of how do you want to feel coming out of COVID, feeling better, looking better, feeling stronger, feeling just good, not feeling completely out of control. Share it with people you love because we all want to feel our best collectively as a community, wanting to make sure we are healthy in our bodies, especially with the threat of a global pandemic. So please, I appreciate your time, your rating, your reviewing, you sharing with this with those you love. I'll see you next week. Bye for now.